Hey cuties, welcome back to Five Years Time Podcast with your host Grace. I'm so excited you've joined us this week. We are going to have a wonderful episode. I'm a little nervous to record this because I don't know, I just feel like ah, I get really nervous to share this part with the world because I think it's so personal and I never want to make anyone feel any sort of way towards themselves that's negative or angered when I'm saying what I'm saying. But anyways, this week we're going to be talking about my journey with food, which is a very personal journey to myself. And I myself feel I've actually listened to two episodes recently or two podcasts recently that had a they both shared their opinions on food or perhaps diet culture. And I've had that episodes where I've talked about diet culture. So you can go listen to those. I believe it's called Diet Culture 101 or whatever. But I've listened to two episodes recently and they both kind of, I don't know, not the whole episodes rubbed me the wrong way, but there were parts in it that rubbed me the wrong way. And I feel like that's kind of true to who I am. And I'm trying to be better at that is that sometimes when I have a differing opinion than someone else, it's not that I feel I'm right and they're wrong. It's more, I feel like, oh, we, we, I can't like, you don't get it. We don't get each other, but that's not true. We can all have different opinions and still have relationship. Obviously there's extents to that, but I'm trying to get better at being open to new ideas and new opinions. I'm not saying that I'm totally closed off, but there's certain situations. And I think my relationship with food is one that I've been very stubborn with, but you'll hear that. I think that my stubbornness has treated me well because I've been stubborn in a against diet culture type of way. But I just think that there's a lot of triggers around food for everyone. And um, so I just want to put it out there that this episode I'm going to be talking about basically from childhood to now, um, the evolution of my journey with food and eating and um, absorbing people's opinions around me and how that has changed and et cetera. So if you are struggling and do not feel like this episode is fit for you, please do not listen. Um, we have lots of other wonderful episodes, uh, but I also hope to share a positive journey with you. Um, I do f- believe to this day that I have a very positive relationship with food and I hope to um, cast some light and share that with you. Uh, that being said, whatever I say Um, is not me saying that I did it better or I know what's right from wrong. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm just sharing my personal experience and I hope that it can, um, that it can help us to connect further and deeper and also just like give you even more understanding on all the food content I share and joy that I try to create in the kitchen. So without further ado, let's get into our weekly recap and then we'll get into the meat and potatoes of it all. Ah, I feel like I need to take a sip after that. I just had, I was like, I think I wrote somewhere that I was going to say a disclaimer, but I was going to say it a little bit later, but I just needed to get off my chest because I just feel like I have not, not that I haven't wanted to record this. I actually wanted to record this a a few times, but I definitely, um, I don't know why this, this episode makes me particularly nervous, but it just does. It just does. Anyways, this week was a wonderful week. We went away for the weekend to Collingwood, which is always quite a treat. I love Collingwood. We used to go all the time. It's like the ski town around us. Well, now that we live out in Niagara, it's not actually around us. It's it's quite a journey, which is why we don't go very often. The closest ski hill to us would actually be in the States, Ellicottville, which we plan to go. This winter, I don't think will be the winter, but um, we're actually going to Collingwood a little bit later in the winter to get Ro up on her first pair of skis and then hopefully next year we'll feel good and collected. I also just got Ro's passport so it'll be easier for us to get over the border and we can do some more um, consistent skiing. But anyways, that's just a little side story. But we went to Collingwood for a wedding which was lovely. Um, Trevor's cousin was getting married and it was so beautiful. A winter wedding is always so special especially because I feel like no one's really doing anything in the winter. We're all just hanging around, feeling glum and 
there's darkness in the night and we're not all getting up and feeling busy. We're in that hibernation phase. We're kind of just like enjoying and embracing the quiet low life, (laughs) the snuggling and watching shows and eating snacks. So it's always nice to spice it up with a little wedding, getting to get dressed up, having a night out, enjoying delicious food and drinks and being with the ones that you love, dancing, all of that. So it was just a lovely little treat for February. We had a great time. Um, Me and Trev's sisters and Trevor all got ready at the hotel together and enjoyed some Prosecco and we were just having a wonderful time. And then, so funny, we went to a wedding in the summer, a family wedding in the summer, and it was so, so hot that, so there were shuttles from like the wedding back to the hotel. So we fully didn't expect to like go on the first shuttle, but we were so hot. And once I get like too hot, I can't recover. Like I just need to take like a cold shower change into something loose like not into wedding clothes right so we all ended up going home on the first shuttle which I think was like 10 p.m and then just like put on light jammies took our cold showers and go to bed and felt so much better for doing that but so we said I had said this we this wedding we're staying at least till the second shuttle because normally there's three and so at the summer wedding the first shuttle was 10 so anyways they're announcing the for the shuttles and the first one's going to be 11. And then everyone's like, like uh, Trevor and his siblings were like, oh, 11's kind of late. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, oh, no, are we changing the game? Like, are we only staying till 11? Because I need to like pace myself according to like what what the plan is. Um, and then so I, I everyone was like, no, it's kind of late. Like, I don't know if I'll make it past 11 because then the next one was 12 and then there's one at one. And I said the goal was to make it to the 12 one. Anyways, I was like, oh, okay, we're all changing our tune. So I was like, okay, okay, no worries. Like, we can stick with 11. That's all good. I was just trying to, like, you know, make us be the life of the party. And so then me and Lauren were, like, committed to that 11 time once dinner ended. And then all of a sudden, Becca and Trevor, I don't know, were like, yeah, let's do it. Let's party. And they ended up staying till the last shuttle. But I was exhausted by that point. <laughs> it's like once I turn that thing in my brain that's like, okay, 11 is your goal then that's what it is. So me and uh, Lauren went home on the first shuttle and I'm happy I did because I had a great sleep and felt wonderful the next day. And Trevor and Becca had a great time too. And we got to hear all their stories after. But yeah, also another thing about like winter weddings is that when you're eating dinner, it's dark. So I feel like it can just make you like tired as each course goes on. For me personally, who goes to bed, not even like at nine or eight anymore. I've been really bad. I've been falling asleep at like seven with row every night, which I'm trying not to think of it as bad. It's not. It's actually good. This is what this time of year is about. It's about rest and relaxation. And I feel like recently my days and my weeks have just been like, go, 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 go. That as soon as I hit the hay with row, it's like I, I listen to a podcast while I'm putting her to sleep. Um, and I think I like get 10 minutes in and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to fall asleep. And then I should leave then. But then I'm like, oh, I really want to listen to like the rest of this podcast. And then I just fall asleep. But I'm glad. I'm glad that I'm getting good sleeps. Um, but yeah, so basically that this past week has just been um, preparing for going away, going away. And then today is Valentine's Day. I'm uh, recording this on Tuesday. So happy Valentine's Day, cuties. Um, we set up a little scavenger hunt for Ro this morning, which was so cute. And we did all her Valentines for her class this morning. And then she really wanted to make cinnamon rolls. She wants to make heart shaped cinnamon rolls. I, I said last week, I said, Oh, do you want to choose next week's bread of the week? Because I'm doing a bread of the week. Um, as I learned how to make all the different breads and she was like, oh, let's do cinnamon rolls. And I was like, okay. And then I picked her up from my mom's because she stayed at my mom's this weekend. And she was like, oh, I can't wait to make the cinnamon rolls heart shaped. And I was like, heart shaped. And she's like, yeah, for Valentine's. And I was like, oh, okay. So the plan was to make that last night or to prep it all and then have it ready to bake off in the morning and ice for breakfast. But honestly, I did not have the, I did not have, like, I would have had to do it. I wanted to do it with her after school, but then we ended up, it was so nice out. We ended up playing outside. So that ran out of time. And then when I was putting Ro to bed, the plan was to do it in the evening. And I was like, there's no way because it's not, I would have to, after I put her to bed, I would have to make them, let them proof and then roll them and then put them in the fridge overnight. And just that time where they would proof, it's like, I would fall asleep. So I decided what I would do it today. So I'm going to record the podcast. I 
and then I'm going to do it later and have it all ready for after school because I want to make her a cute Valentine's snack platter. I found we have this three tier. I think it's three tier. It might be two. I haven't taken it out of the box in like years, but I just refound it and it's like a tiered um, charcuterie board, I believe. I believe that's the point of it, but I'm going to use it for like an epic snack platter for Ro as an after school valentine's tea party thing and so my hope is to finish the cinnamon buns so that i can put them on the bottom tier and then put a little like you know meat cheese fruit i don't know i'll figure it out but it's gonna be so cute and she'll be so excited because she's never seen this before and it's fun because it's like tiered um but yeah so that's the plan today i'm gonna do it and i don't know how heart shaped they're gonna be you know the italian like i think they're italian um I don't remember what they're called, but they're like puff pastry cookies that are like almost heart shaped. They roll them in to like each side. So instead of just rolling from one side, they roll from both sides. So I'm going to try and do that and then try and make it as a pointed tip as possible. But then when they proof, who knows what's going to happen. But I can do pink icing. They'll be fun. I'm going to try. That's all that matters. And Ro always cares that I try. (laughs) Um, So yeah, that's what this week's been like and it's just been really lovely it's been so sunshiny I cannot complain when we drove on Saturday we went to go pick up Becca and then we started driving and by the time we hit Burlington you could see a patch of sun like it was so gloomy and then we got to the patch of sun and it never went away and it still hasn't gone away it's still sunny today so it's just been a really lovely treat um so let's get into our snack and drink of the week pew, 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 snack and drink of the week i should definitely be a dj um our drink of the week is a mcdonald's iced coffee oh my gosh mm, these things are so good they're also like <laughs> i used to be so addicted to the routine of getting one of these especially when I worked in the city and I was doing my before and after school childcare because I would always have to go run errands during the day. I would like have to go grocery shopping or get supplies or go to the bank. And I was always like booping around. And whenever dollar drinks days were there, I was like, I'm just going to pick up this. And I was like an everyday thing. And I was like, I need to stop. I have coffee at home, like stop. But today we saw the billboard on the way to Collingwood and it's I think it said it was starting on Valentine's Day and we were like oh my gosh so I woke up this morning I was like oh, it's dollar drink days I have a big list of things I need to do podcast and cinnamon buns being part of that but I have a big list of things that I want to complete today so I was like you know I think I can do the caffeine today because McDonald's doesn't have decaf but I was like I think I'm gonna go get that so we were super organized this morning and me and Ro got in the car early enough to make a little pit stop on the way to school and I'm just so excited about it. Mm-hmm. So this is my reminder to you. Dollar drink days. Well, I think it's just dollar coffee in the winter um, is back and uh, the McDonald's iced coffee is so freaking good. Okay. And our snack of the week is oranges. I bought the most spectacular oranges this week. I believe it is citrus season, but I bought oranges last week and they were not as good as the ones this week. This week, they are just so juicy. I also went to a new place. I went to Harvest Barn, which is a local, it's very similar to Farm Boy, like, (laughs) except for it's like extremely local and it is like a all year round farmer's market kind of. And they have produce and um, it's basically a grocery store, except for they don't have um, a, no, they have a deli, but they don't have a butcher and they don't have a giant selection of dairy. So if you are like an individual and you just need a little carton of milk and a little thing of yogurt, like that's fine. But if you're a family and you need like the bag of milk, then they don't have that. So anyways, but I had everything else. I was very um pleasantly surprised I'm so happy that I finally went in there and uh, you can tell that like in the summer spring summer and fall like the big harvest time that there would be uh they have much more space like in the outside and the entranceways for even more bountiful of produce and I'm sure that it looks like they probably have garden stuff as well and they have a little wine shop in there it is so lovely so yeah I had a great time and that's where I got the oranges from and they were immaculate so I was very happy. And it's nice to support super local. Like it feels good. Um, Especially because it 
I, it didn't cost me more than what I would normally do in my grocery shopping. Okay. Those are my snacks and drinks of the week. That being said, I'm going to take another sip of this because we're getting into this week I learned, which was me learning about breaking down my food journey and really reflecting on each year of my life. I'm not going to go year for year, but you'll see how I'm going to do it. But that being said, it's going to be strap yourself in because who knows how long it's going to be. <laughs> I'm not trying to make it seem like it's going to be horrible, but I will need a sip. Okay. Okay. Ah, I wrote, start with a disclaimer. Also, <laughs> I want to show the, I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up. I'm going to try and show the video if you're watching on YouTube, what my notes look like, because they're literal chicken scratch. This is what my writing looks like, but I feel like it's even harder to read when you write with the iPad pen, but it's still like, that's somehow I I can pick it up. Well, it's not focusing. You can't see it. Oh, kind of. Kind of. No. Okay. Anyways, it's literal chicken scratch. <laughs> I just looked at it now and I was like, whoa. I, I normally make it, try and make it a little bit easier for me while I'm, uh-oh. Oh, no, it's okay. I just got a pop-up on my computer, on my Chrome, and I thought it was saying, like, can't connect to the internet. And I was like, oh, no, it's not recording. But it was just saying it can't update right now, which is good. Please don't update. I don't need my computer to shut off. But anyways, I was trying to say I try and make my... Uh, these notes look a little bit easier so that I can quickly just glance at them to make sure I'm like hitting all the marks I wanted to hit but I feel like I was writing this down and it was just like I was really just getting my brain out and yeah that's okay we're gonna we're gonna get through it okay so we're gonna start I have it broken down into I think eight 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 sections of my life so the first is childhood number one my childhood so I think my childhood was full of a love for food. I loved cooking. I loved creating in the kitchen. I loved making big messes. My mom always says that she would come home from work and the kitchen would just be like full of disasters. But then there would be the cake I made or the stew I prepared. And she was always happy that I was fostering and um, creating and loving cooking. And she didn't mind uh, cleaning up the mess and <laughs> that being said I did I have learned I love the flow of cleaning and cooking now like cleaning while cooking that's like my favorite flow it makes me feel so euphoric like it literally feels so good when every moment of like a cooking process or baking process is like filled with something meaningful it's like a really beautiful dance it is oh, that's what it is it's a beautiful dance but Anyways, that was a big part of my childhood. I would wake up in the morning and instead of watching cartoons before school, I would always watch the Food Network. I absolutely loved it. I found so much inspiration and love and enjoyment in that. I would spend my weekends creating new things. I had a camcorder and I would make videos with my friends who would want to and they would join me in my cooking videos and we would make, that's what we would do. We would make cooking videos and make different things and brownies and whatever. And I just had so much fun doing that. And so I think my childhood was like a big love for food. I would say that I was not aware of, um, I didn't, I didn't, I mean, I think I was probably aware of some things, but like diet culture was not part of my thinking. Um, I don't think I felt insecure in my childhood about what I was putting into my body or how other people were perceiving it or whatever. Um, okay. Teen years. This is in part one and two. So part one of my teen, teen years, um, when I went to high school, maybe from like grade eight up. So high school where I'm from is grade nine. So maybe a little bit of middle school. Um, I think I, gain more awareness of other people's opinions and um, I became self-conscious and I think this is a time where a lot of people begin to feel self-conscious going through puberty changes um, I went to a school from k to eight so I was like always with the same kids so in middle school which was part of my school that was k to eight but there were other feeder schools that joined us so there were a few new kids like that would come in during middle school that are now part of our school that we didn't grow up with so you're having new opinions new people and people are changing and growing and so i definitely became aware of people's opinions i definitely felt more self-conscious i think i dimmed myself a bit i became shyer um i feel like i took on 
then going into high school, I feel like I took on other people's anxieties, which I think is something I still do to this day. Um, I try not to. It's something that I'm aware of more so. I don't think I would have been aware of it this, like, that that's what I was doing. But definitely, like, in grade 9 and 10, I was meeting all these new people. I went to a school that was not affiliated with my junior school. So I didn't know anyone when I went to high school. I was meeting all these new people. And I was really um, self-conscious of, like, just, I don't know. I was shy and I was like not self-conscious of like who I was necessarily, but self-conscious of how people would perceive me. I was self-conscious that I didn't have anyone that I connected, that I came with, that I knew. Um, And so I like kind of tested the waters when people were open to getting to know me, then I felt safe to open to get to know them. So I feel like I was either closed off, but if someone like came up to me and was like, hey, then I was like open to talking to them. I was definitely very nervous. And then I feel like I took in a lot of people's um, opinions and anxiety around diet culture and food and how food affects your body. And that's where I feel like I started learning that people um, people had all these connotations about eating certain things or being vegetarian is healthier or um, wanting labels around everything um, restrictive dieting, like all of that, I feel like I learned. And it was like, my brain was a sponge and I was just taking it all in. And I was like, I feel like I was like, oh my gosh, like this is so much new and I don't know (laughs) what's right from wrong. And I feel like I personally then felt like, okay, I need to be restrictive about something too. Cause everyone seems to have something that they don't eat that makes them feel healthier. So I stopped eating beef. That was mine. I didn't eat beef. And I think it was only for a few years, but oh my gosh, I can't believe, I like, I actually forgot about that until I was writing it down. But there was a time in my life where I didn't eat beef and I was the person who would like go to camp and get the vegetarian option because I didn't eat beef and we were having hamburgers or whatever. And it's just so wild. I totally blanked that part out of me. And I actually just writing it down, I remembered why I started eating beef again was because me and Trevor um, were, I went over to Trevor's for dinner when we first started dating or maybe when we were first friends and they were having steak and I was going to have whatever, like the, they were making me an alternative, but then Trevor hates pickles. So we, he was like, if you eat a bite of steak, I'll eat a bite of pickle. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes. And so I had a bite of steak and I was like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. Like, how was I not eating this? And then Trevor was like, I still hate pickles, but yeah, that's actually why I started eating it again, which is just wild. And it's just wild that I totally forgot that there was this huge restrictive part of my life. And the reason that I wasn't eating that was because I was thinking it was going to make me healthier in some way. Not necessarily because I thought beef was unhealthy. I think it was just because everyone around me had something that they were restricting. Like someone was vegetarian, someone was vegan, somebody was gluten-free, somebody, everyone, or someone didn't eat chocolate before seven or someone didn't eat after eight or whatever. Everyone had something that they were restricting. So I felt like, oh, I have to do that or else I'm not healthy. Um, yeah, so that was the beginning of high school for me. And I also, this is so bad and it was definitely teetering on distor- disordered eating and in eating disorder was I realized that when I, um, didn't eat in the morning. So like a lot of the times I wasn't organized enough to have like a proper breakfast in the morning. And then I would realize that if I didn't eat till I came home, like my body stayed in a specific way, obviously like bloating and your body changes throughout the day. Right. And this being said, like, it's, I don't even know how I noticed this because if you look back at, if I look back at pictures of me, or even if I look at, think about myself in that time, like it wasn't it wasn't a huge difference. Like it was probably not even noticeable to anybody else. And I would try my hardest to not eat all day and then eat when I get home from school. There was a time in my life that I did that. And that is just so wild, especially now knowing how much food affects me. We'll get through this, but like, I think food affects everyone, but affects my mood. I think that's true to everyone, but this is my story. So I'm talking personally to myself, but I learned so quickly 
that I cannot concentrate if I'm not eating or have I haven't had um, food and I can't participate and be joyful and my happy self if I haven't um, satiated myself. So anyways, the beginning of high school was a very experimental and confusing time for me. And I took on a lot of um, the people around me opinions and anxieties and fostered them into my own. And I teetered on disordered eating and could have quickly turned that into an eating disorder. Um, but thankfully, <laughs> I, I was able to not. And I don't think I tried. Like, it wasn't for, it wasn't me actively seeking a different way of thinking about food. I That's not at all what, why I stopped um, restricting or um, having time windows of eating or whatever. That's not why I stopped. Um, the actual reason that I stopped was because I, um, I just decided, or I just, <laughs> I went through, um, my dad passed away when I was in grade 10. And I think that that was a really difficult time for me with my relationships. So I feel like when I went to high school, as I said, I like didn't really know anyone. And then I was like only open to getting to know people who were getting to know me, not only open, I would have loved to get to know a lot of people, but I was too nervous to talk to people first. So if someone talked to me first, then I was open to getting to know them. So I feel like I was kind of just like floating around from group to group and like slowly getting to know a few people, but not necessarily vibing with people or finding the people that are like my community that I connect with. And so then when my dad passed away, that was like a big eye opener for me. Because it's like if you've had a um, if you've had a parent pass away when you were younger, especially in high school, maybe in middle school, like and I don't know about childhood, but like in high school or maybe young adulthood, I'm not sure. I've only had the experience of high school, but I noticed really quickly it makes things awkward. People don't know how to act around you. Um, a lot of the time they just stop talking to you. They, I feel like I lost a lot of friends um, through that transition because people were just awkward and I guess they just didn't want to like, they didn't know what to do. And I was also like, sad and processing something but like I also was looking for normalcy like I remember I can do a whole episode on grief and loss and more detail about that but I just remember yearning from the moment um it happened or maybe the day after for just like some normalcy <laughs> like just wanting to craving for what a life I was used to um but anyways that being set aside, I feel like I was cut off from a lot of people and I had to um, kind of just like find a new group. And the way that I wanted to go about that this time around, because I, I feel like I got burned doing it the way that I did the first time by not like being authentically me right off the bat and getting to know people was I just decided that I was going to live my most authentic life, not hold myself back, just be who I am right off the bat. And um what comes comes and I feel like that will attract the people that I need in my life so moving on to part three. Oh no my hair elastic just broke <laughs> okay let me just go grab a clip hi cuties I'm back <laughs> sorry I actually knew my elastic was gonna break because this morning I put it in my mouth like before like it between my teeth before I was like putting my pony in and I think I bit on it it's just like one of those little plastic clear ones and I think I bit on it and it, I thought when I bit on it I was like oh I think I might have teared it a bit but I was like oh, I'm still gonna use it anyways it did break but we fixed it okay where was I so we're on number three which is part two which is the second half of my teen years um and leading into my early 20s okay so I was opening up. I was living authentically. I was um, connecting with people that I really vibed with. And it is wild um, the, the, the way that the people I connected with in the latter half of my teen years and after my dad passed away are the most key people in my life still to this day. Like I met Trevor the summer after my dad passed away. I met my best friend, Neela. I met my best friend Tiana. I met I met all these people that were just are still so important to me to this day and it's like 
I was sent into, I don't know, like I grew in a way that I'm so grateful for. So anyways, that being said, the people that I connected with were like-minded, but also just free and fun loving. And I feel like they weren't pushing any type of diet culture on me or, um, me and my best friend, Neela, like our favorite thing to do in our pastime was like have food competitions. We would like race to see how many hot dogs we could eat the fastest or who could eat the most salad the fast. Okay. Salad is really hard to eat in food competition, but like we loved going to bulk barn and getting snack mixes. We loved doing Pillsbury parties where we would buy a bunch of different Pillsbury things and just like make a whole bunch and eat it. And it was just like going out for sushi. And I think food was like a big part of our relationship And I think that that is something that is so important um, for me is to connect with people over food because food is my love language and it's where my joy lies. And when I connect with people through food and they vibe the same way, um, it's just like I know right off the bat, like we we're going to have a great friendship. So I connected with people who were able to live um, through food freedom and fun and just like enjoying food in a positive light. And I'm so grateful for that because that led me into my early 20s with that same confidence in myself and confidence in my relationship with food, which allowed me to push away (laughs) the the opinions of the media and social media. Like this is the time that um, Facebook was starting and Instagram was beginning. And I was able to just like walk through that with confidence on my shoulders and um, joy for food. And I'm so grateful for that. And I know that I know that that is such a privilege that I was able to have because I, I just like, if it went the other way, where I was teetering on disordered eating, I could have quickly just fallen into that. So I'm so grateful for that. But into my early 20s food was such a beautiful thing for me and I went away I moved away for school when I was 18 and I moved to Ottawa where again I knew nobody (laughs) and but I took the same skills that I'd learned um, halfway through high school to connect with people that I vibed with but that being said I lived in res I had a roommate that was a lot older than me and we didn't really talk I'm not gonna say we didn't get along I feel like we just never talked and so I felt very isolated in that and um, I would say that the people I met in res aren't necessarily the people that I would have met if I wasn't living in res like they were there because they were there convenience friends but by second year I pushed myself out I'd met people who went to different schools or we connected through church all of these other facets or volunteering and girl guides and all our placements in class all of that stuff so I feel like I was able to connect with some really great people and we again I would host Pancake Tuesday or we would um, I would invite even when I was in res I would invite friends back from in between class that didn't live on campus so that we could make food and have lunch together and it was just like a beautiful thing I I truly do bond through feud feud <laughs> food so I'm so happy that um, that continued into my early 20s I was the person who was bringing a cake to a St. Patrick's Day party where we were all getting shmammered Um, but at least we had cake with sprinkles (laughs) so yeah that led me into my early 20s through work through school I would go to campus when and then when I I moved home and I was working and then I went back to school and I still lived at home and when I would go to campus I would bring um, a whole day like if I was going to be on campus all day it was like I was bringing I would have a little bit of food Um, at home. Well, I normally drove my mom to work. My mom doesn't drive. So I would drive my mom to work early in the morning and have toast and coffee on the road. And then I would be prepared at work or on campus with um, normally a yogurt parfait. That was my favorite thing ever. And then um, snacks to lead me throughout the day, a big lunch. You know how I make my lunches. It would be like I had this like bento box that would have like either a big salad or sandwich and then all the sides uh, still the same way. I have eaten this my snack plate way like forever um 
and I would bring in a bottle of water and then a fun drink because it's always fun to have a little some fun. So something in a can or a bottle or a nice coffee or a hot London fog, something. I would always make something fun. Um, and yeah, I just feel like I really fostered and cherished my relationship with food and um, we grew together in a positive light. I was also very stubborn in my values um, at this time. And so I was very much like if I heard anything that had to do with diet culture, I was like, oh, I would like turn it off. Stop listening. Um, Not that I didn't value what people had to say, but I also knew in my heart that um, food is a... (laughs) People always say food is fuel, which I think like maybe if you're in a mindset where like food is evil to you, then that's like something good. But food is more than fuel. It's a relationship and it's joy and it's happiness. And it is um, it is it is so much more like it is tasting good. It is meeting cravings. It is feeling comfort after a hard day. Um, Food is so much more than fuel. And it is just like so relational. And I think that like for me, even that term kind of makes me like "Mm," a bit. And I know that that's like a hot take. But (laughs) anyways, so I was very stubborn in my values. Not I didn't push anything on anyone. But if people would talk about, um, oh, I'm this or their labels or food labels or um, any things to do with diet culture or saying healthy and bad. I don't say things like that. I don't even say healthy, um, about anything. I believe that, um, I believe that that's been taken over. Those terms have been taken over by diet and they've changed for something that isn't true to what it is like, but that's all personal. Um, but anyways, I don't use those words. I don't use healthy. I don't use bad. I don't use junk. I don't, I barely, I used to say treat all the time. Like, Oh, I'm going to the store to get a treat, but I don't even use that anymore ever since I've had row because I really, I use snack because I really want, um, to take any, any reward level off of food. Like I just want it to be pretty neutral. So, um, anyways, I was very stubborn in my views And I'm glad that I was um, because I just took everything that everyone had to say with a grain of salt. And I knew that I felt comfortable and confident the way that I was eating. And yeah, I was growing and my body was changing. And um, I just tried to remind myself like it's not um, you're not like nothing. I don't know how to explain it, but like what I understood from diet culture when I was falling into that um, was that any restriction wasn't changing me for any way in the better. I felt worse about myself. I felt the least confident I ever felt. Maybe I would have been the, maybe I was the smallest, but I also was younger. And um, I just was not the nicest and I wasn't the most, I, my, my, my blood sugars were all over the place. They were dipping and they were spiking and I just wasn't regulated in my mood. And yeah, there was a lot of negative that I could reflect on that came from when I had fallen into different restrictive eatings and so I was just like strong in my values that like I am myself and connected to my body and I listen to my heart and my brain and my soul and I know what I need and nobody else can know that for me and I can't know that for you either so it's definitely an an independent journey I mean it's an independent journey to intuitive eating but if you're struggling, that's not an independent journey. We are here for you to support you and ask for help, like a hundred percent lean on the people around you. Um, yeah. So I just didn't want to mix that up. Okay. So going into part four, which is just my, my, or I guess we did part four. I, cause I did part three, which was high school leading into, um, my early twenties. So part four was my early twenties, just loving my relationship with food as a young adult and supporting myself um, with food in my daily life. Okay, five, mid-20s, preparing for a baby. (laughs) Me and Trevor got married when we were, honestly, I always forget these timelines, but I'm pretty sure we were 24. I think we got engaged when we were 23, married when we were 24. And um, we were not planning on having a baby right away. We said we'd give ourselves the first year to just enjoy marriage. We'd been together a long time, though. And then on our first year anniversary, we would talk about what we wanted. So I went into our first year anniversary 
um, I guess being 25 and knowing that I was ready for a baby and Trevor wasn't he, but he said he would like think about it and come back to me. And so, but I knew when I was 25 that I wanted to have a kid and I always, my mom always told me, my mom works in healthcare. She was a nurse. My mom would always tell me like when I got to the childbearing years that when you are going to have a baby, you want to be the healthiest you've been the year before. Like you just want to really prepare. You need to prepare your body to house a child. And um, it's so important to just foster a foster a really like you want to be as healthy as you can be. And she wasn't saying that in like a you need to be the fittest, the skinniest, the restrict, nothing like that. Just more like you need to be nourishing yourself. You need to feel strong. You need like like pregnancy is work for your body and labor is a huge undertaking. So it was more just to have the best opportunity to have a healthy pregnancy and a healthy delivery was to try and be the healthiest I could, mind, body, soul. So I always knew that. So at 25, I knew that I was going to start wanting to have a baby soon. Um, So me and Trevor talked about it, whatever. He wasn't ready. I respected that. But I began looking into ways that I could really foster um, the healthiest year of my life. Um, because I knew that it was going to come soon and I wanted to be prepared. Mom said the year before (laughs) I'm a rule follower. No, but I just knew that I wanted to be prepared and that I'm someone who, if there's an action I can do to prepare for something, I am in it. (laughs) I'm in the game. Like I, especially for, um, delivery, I was so nervous for pregnancy and delivery. Like I am a scaredy cat and I'm trying not to be a scaredy cat. We all know this, but that was something that was so unknown for me. And if there was a way that I could prepare and be in the know, then I wanted to. So I began looking for different gyms that fostered the beliefs that I had. Because as you know, I'm stubborn in my values and I could not go somewhere where it was about having a big, <laughs> luscious booty and not and talking about different diet cultures and saying like, oh, we're going to party hard tonight. So we need to grind now. Like it could not be that for me. I would not feel comfortable. It would make me feel icky and it would eventually push their values on me. And I did not want that. So I wanted the opposite. I wanted something where it was about your mind body connection and I wanted to learn and I wanted to grow powerful and strong and feel empowered as a woman. And I wanted to learn. That was a really big thing for me because fitness was never like fitness. Fitness was really never part of my life. Like I've always been active, walking, being outdoors, all of that stuff. But like actual working out was never part of my life because I was scared (laughs) that it would that it would um, impede on the beautiful relationship that I had with my body or had gained with my body and worked hard for and I didn't want other people's values to be pushed on me Um, so I also never felt like I was capable of um, doing like fitness or sports I because I was a nervous cat and I didn't try at things that I felt like I wouldn't be able to do which that is a mistake try always try and you will learn so anyways this is my mid-20s 25 year old Grace is going to learn how to become the healthiest most connected person to her body so that she can foster and grow a child like no one before not no one but like never before for me So I did find a gym. I found the most amazing gym ever that connected your mind and body and soul. And you were able to get a a year's pass. Well, I did. I think I did buy a year's pass. I'm pretty sure that's what I did was I signed up for a year, which like I would not recommend to anyone. But also at the same time, like I knew what I wanted. And I knew that in the next year I was hoping to get pregnant and that I wanted to be the healthiest I could be and foster um, a beautiful relationship with myself and my body and feel really connected to how everything works. And just like, I knew that that's what I wanted. So, but you could do month memberships or even just like classes, but it was a gym that had an upstairs and a downstairs studio. The downstairs was more like weights, boxing and um, circuit training. And the upstairs was Pilates and yoga and um, lightweight training and all different stability ball, all these different things. So you could take, oh, and meditation and um, restorative yoga. So you could take all different classes. And it was beautiful. (laughs) It was my favorite spot. And unfortunately, it closed down during the pandemic. And also we moved out of the city. But I still dream about going to this gym. And that was one of the hardest things about my postpartum journey. (laughs) We'll get to it was that I wasn't able to return because COVID happened. And it was 
I was really sad. I could actually cry thinking about it. But anyways, I spent this year meeting the most amazing trainers, two of them, Jess and Mackenzie, who I love with my whole heart. They changed the game for me. Mackenzie, we've had on the podcast, Fitness um, Beauty Health is, I believe what the episode is called, or maybe it's Fitness with Mackenzie. I'm not sure what the episode was called. I'll link it below, but she is a world of knowledge and she gave me the ability to connect to a power within me that I did not know existed. Anyways, long story short, because I really did touch on it in that episode, if you want to know more about that fitness journey for me, was that I was learning things that I never knew that I could do before with my body and getting stronger and feeling more connected to my relationship with my mind. And I was feeling more leveled. My moods were good. I was getting stronger every day. And I was still eating and embracing the food relationship that I had. And I was so proud of myself for being able to get into fitness without falling into diet culture. And I really am glad that I found a place that fostered the same values as me. I think that's so important. And even there, of course, every trainer is different. And one time I would go to a class with a new trainer I never met and they would say something along the lines of, oh, it's Friday. Like, let's get our burn on so we can have a fun weekend. And I knew that I couldn't go back to that class. And that might seem like, oh, that's a little much, Grace. But I knew for myself that I did not want to surround myself in a culture that um, pushed those types of values. So I just would not go to those classes. And that fit me perfectly. And I was able to really um, foster this relationship. So fast forward, me and Trevor decided that we wanted to have kids or Trevor was on board and we're all ready to do it together. And then it took us a few months uh, to get pregnant. And then when I was pregnant, I continued going to this gym throughout my pregnancy up all the way up until two weeks um, overdue. I was still going and it was keeping my, it was keeping me so I have never felt so good. That's why I love my pregnancy. But I, I had an amazing pregnancy and I never felt the best I ever felt um, then. Like I felt so powerful and so connected to Ro. I would go to meditations and different restorative yogas and they would do guided meditations with me and Rosie like in womb. It was incredible. Like I was, I loved it. So anyways, then I went into labor. Well, I didn't go into labor. I got <laughs> induced, but labor came and it was a little bit <laughs> um, intense when it was time to push. It was one of those moments where it was like, if it doesn't happen now, then it's a C-section. And I think I went into like super productive mama mode and I just pushed I, they were like, hey, ready, we're doing it. Let's push. And that first push, I just remember this doctor being like, I will. It was I was a doctor I never met before. Like she was just on call that day. She was like, I will forever. She was like, is this your first baby? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, I will literally never forget you. Like that was the most incredible push I have ever seen in my entire life. And I was like, I have been training for this. Like literally all my plie squats. I sent my a message to my trainer after being like, I plie squat it myself right into this like in, amazing powerful push but it was just like the biggest um reward was meeting Ro and knowing that me and her me and Ro worked so hard together like throughout this pregnancy to ensure that she came to Earthside in such a beautiful way so anyways that's my um mid 20s is where I really found this beautiful connection between fitness and um food and just learning the power that was within me Um, And then leading into postpartum. So postpartum was difficult. I felt guilt and so much change. I've never seen myself change in a way postpartum. And I think that's true to everyone who goes through postpartum. It is instant change that happens to your body that I don't think you can ever experience in any other way. Like your body changes so quickly it's just, it was just, I couldn't comprehend what was happening. And I instantly, instantly went to restriction. In my mind, I was like, okay, I can't eat. I need to eat super healthy. I need to get back to who I was before. Um, I feel really uncomfortable. And I don't even think it was necessarily, I needed to get like, I don't even think 
that reflecting back on it I don't think that it was that I wanted to get back into a certain body I think it was more that I just felt so uncomfortable I've gone through so much change in my body I now have this baby I am just changing mentally like so much change is happening and I just want normalcy and so the I was like I instantly went to diet culture like instantly it was restrictive right that was the first thing that happened so even no matter how hard I try to avoid it the first thing was like if I don't eat then I'm and then I'll then I'll lose weight then I'll do this and I'll yeah that only lasted a couple weeks like I think it was the first two weeks or first week then I got a really bad infection and uh, my health was put on the line it was like I could not I didn't get the infection because of that but it was like I really just needed someone to take care of me and so Trevor was making me breakfast every morning we were getting ourselves more organized and I needed to start taking care of myself better and thankfully like I hated that infection but thankfully it happened because it just made me rely on other people where I was in that first week trying to rely on myself more than anyone else and that's not what you can do postpartum you need to lean on your supports and yeah Thankfully, that happened because, I mean, everything happens for a reason. I truly do believe, do believe that, but it pushed us into me having to really rely on the people around me, and they were feeding me and making me food and making sure that I was having snacks all the time, and that just, like, right away, I started feeling myself again, like, feeling back into comfort and um just like myself, like mentally, like feeling like, okay, like I can start um, actually processing my feelings and thinking about what needs to be done and like getting a to-do list done. Um, To-do list being (laughs) feed baby, change baby, feed baby, change baby, watch a show, like not a huge to-do list, but just like actually like process the day. Um, Yeah. So postpartum, that was really quick. And then I quickly went back into a uh, love for my relationship with food and I felt a lot of normalcy in that so when Trevor went to work he only went to work for a few weeks because then he got sent home to work from home because we had row right before the pandemic but he went to work for maybe two or three weeks because he was home for two weeks with me and then I think he went back to work for two weeks maybe three weeks and so during that time I would make these snack plates that I love so much and because I found that I was very stationary so I just needed a bunch of food with me at once so I would make a big snack plate with all different turkeys or turkeys all different sliced meats and um, I loved uh, cutting up a bunch of vegetables and fruits and putting on some um, trail mixes and chocolates and some chips and like you know what my snack plates like look like so I would make that and I would be able to sit for a few hours in one spot with Ro napping on me feeding and I would have my iPad with me so I could watch Sex in the City that's what I watched postpartum and I won't watch it until I am postpartum again if that's what I choose to do because I just feel like it's it'll flood me with postpartum emotions and I'm not prepared to have those um but yeah so I then got back into that and then Ro would always have a nap around five o'clock which was great because I was able to put her down and then I would cook in the kitchen and I would use I would either cook things that I was familiar with and then when the pandemic hit there was a lot of time to do nothing so I would bring out the cookbooks and start experimenting with more um, intricate meals as I became a more um, experienced mother in the sense that I was getting used to routine then I had more freedom and time to do that but it really connected me back to myself and my way um, of living prior to having Roe and it felt like normalcy for me so I quickly was able to jump back in to um, what I needed to support and foster my relationship with food and I'd say going into chapter eight which is now I just feel so much joy for food and the relationship that I have fostered and created and cared for and it's been up and down as all relationships are ebbs and flows right but I just feel my most joyful self when I'm in the kitchen cooking and creating food and sharing food with my loved ones and the people around me um, and especially with myself and I feel my best when my I, my mood is most regulated when I am Um, meeting my need of hunger and um, satisfaction and cravings and joy in each little thing and the mix and balance of um, of enjoying all the foods that the world has to offer and not feeling restricted to anything or any category Um, yeah so that is my relationship with food throughout the ages (laughs) um, from childhood to now 
it's been a journey. It will continue to be a journey and I will continue to stay stubborn with my values because I think that's what's so important. But knowing that, I think knowing that um, I had that quick um, switch to diet culture after I had row, like going straight into feeling like restrictive eating was the only way that I would feel myself again, which is funny because that's not even how I felt myself prior. Um, it's just sad that we're pushed all these messages in the media and it really is, um, discouraging, but I try and just think like, as long as you have, um, I think that the most important thing to do is set your values, write it down, um, write down what you want and, um, and go for it. Like always have that to go back on, always have your values to lean back on and definitely lean on the supports around you, especially when you're going through difficult times, grief, postpartum, um, sickness, all, anything. When you're going through difficult times, have the people around you to lean on and support you and really reach out to them because they're what are going to carry you, carry you through and help support you. And yeah. So anyways, I'm a joyful eater and I am happy to share the joy with everyone else. And that's what I hope for from my TikTok page is that people feel um, freedom and comfort in my videos, knowing that there's no judge um, and that we're just making food for eating and having fun and supporting ourselves. And so that is what I hope that people take from me. And I really do think that that is what people do. Um, but yeah, I'm not here to tell you what's healthy or unhealthy because I believe that everything has a purpose and a need. And um, yeah. Anyways, I'm I'm so happy that we that I did this episode. I know I'm gonna feel vulnerable after. What is it called? I forget. But like, I don't remember what it's called. Like sharing vulnerability or whatever. When you like word vomit. I don't think I word vomited. I wrote down my thoughts and I feel like I articulated them the way I wanted to. And I hope that you know that this is my journey, and that everyone's is different. And I'm not here to be the judge. Okay. I just want to make sure you know that. Okay. Let's get into our roses, thorns, and buds. Roses, thorns, and buds. Okay, my rose this week was that last night, the sun set at 5.40 p.m. Like, what? It might have been 5.43. Like, I'm not sure what the specific was, but it was past 5.30. And that is just magnificent. Like, ah! The trees, actually, I'm just thinking about it. I'm like, the trees in just a few weeks are going to start having little buds on them. Like, that is just wild. Oh, I'm so excited. The birds are already starting to chirp. It's just a beautiful time. I need to get some bird seed for my bird feeders, but I am just so excited. I just love sun. Um, Okay. My thorn was that I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed with everything I'd like to do this week or have to do this week. Um, I'm trying really hard to like schedule myself out better, not feel like I need to do so much, but then I also feel like there's so many things that I want to do and I get excited about it, and it's Valentine's, and I want to make cinnamon buns, and whatever, Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to, like, pace myself, so I was feeling a bit overwhelmed last night, so I'm happy I actually ended up falling asleep early with Ro again, (laughs) but I'm happy I did that. I really needed to, and if I didn't fall asleep with Ro, I probably would have ended up dilly-dallying and doing other things and not getting the proper rest that I needed, so I'm just happy that I embraced that, Um, but this weekend is a four-day weekend, for Trev being home because it's family day on Monday, which is off. And then he gets Friday off as well as like a wellness day from his work. So that'll be awesome. And it'll be nice to have him around. Anyways, always turning my thorn into a little bit of a bud. But my bud is that, what did I even write here? Date with, oh yeah, date with Trevor. Um, Me and Trevor are going for our lunch date today. We're going to have a day date for Valentine's and we're going to get barbecue, I believe, from this place that we went to last year. Um, Not for Valentine's, but we haven't been there for a year and it's so good. I'm so excited. So yeah, after I finish recording this, we're actually going to go do that and that'll be nice. I feel like me and Trevor haven't gone on like a date date in a while, so that'll be nice. And then let's get into our entertainment recap. Entertainment recap. Oh, this is going to be really short because I feel like I have not had time to consume any entertainment. Like I just have been going to sleep so early in the afternoon, in the afternoons, in the evenings, and I have not been watching shows throughout the days. We've been going away every weekend for the past couple weekends. I just haven't been watching anything. So I don't have any show recaps. We did watch the, it wasn't even the newest episode of um, Last of Us, but it was the one I think there's still two more, so I won't even try and recap it because it'll be too far away, (laughs) but yeah, 
anyways, I didn't watch the Super Bowl or Rihanna, Rihanna, <laughs> Rihanna's concert. Um, but I did see it on TikTok, like bits and pieces. I haven't seen the full thing, but I saw so much hate everywhere on every single comment was like, oh, it's not good enough. I thought it looked great. I saw this amazing video of this person who said the New York Times failed at like um, giving it a review. Like apparently they gave it a nice review, but they said it had no like something in it. And then she broke it down. And um, I don't know if this was what it was about, but the way that she broke it down was amazing. And she was saying that it was a whole um, story of the journey of her life to motherhood. Um, and it was so amazing. So I'm going to link that TikTok down below. I have to go find it. And I need to write down that I need to find that. Um, but I will link it below because it was such an amazing review. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just thought that was a great case study. And I thought the performance was beautiful. It was lovely. And that when at the end when she was singing Diamonds and just like in the middle of the crowd with the stage up there, oh, it makes you bring a tear to your eye. Um, yeah, then I basically just wrote that I haven't been watching anything. So <laughs> that is a true. Oh, but you know, there was a drama about Netflix, like Netflix released an update saying like, oh, we're going to take away. Oh, Trevor says I'm hyped for BBQ. He just texted me. Um, and I was like, He's like, I was looking through the menu. I want it all. Sorry, I can read the text popping up. Ooh, I love when Trevor's hungry. That means we get to get it all. It's like I can have an appetizer, a dessert, a, a main. We can each get our own main. That's not about us not eating too much. It's more about the spending money. <laughs> but anyways, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So Netflix sent out that thing and it said like, oh, it's only going to be people in your household are allowed to watch it. And then apparently they like took it back right away because everyone was like, um, excuse me, but OK. Truth is that they didn't take it back right away because they are testing it in Canada, I guess. So everyone's getting the notification being like, put in your put in your location. So we actually use my mom's Netflix and we were talking to my mom about it. And I think we all just decided like, we don't I barely watch anything on Netflix like the only things I watch on Netflix are shows that I already have watched like their continued seasons um but I feel like even then half the time it's like oh should I watch the next season should I not watch, watch the next season and so now we're thinking about like what we want to get instead and I think we're going to get Crave which is fantastic because um yeah right now we I think are logged into someone else's crate, but it would be nice to have our own crate. And I feel like there's so many shows that I've been trying to get my mom to watch, but they're HBO shows and she doesn't have access. So I'm just like so excited for her to be able to watch all these shows that I've been enjoying that are HBO. But anyways, that's just a little side note on Netflix. And I just wonder like what's going to happen for them. It's just interesting. Um, anywho, thank you so much for listening. If you're interested in what music I'm listening to, you can go follow our Spotify playlist. Uh, of course, we have my weekly vlogs over on YouTube to check out what I've been up to each week. And um, I'm always on TikTok and Instagram, all at Five Years Time Podcast. And I'm just so appreciative of you being here. I hope that um, I shared with an, I hope that you listened with an understanding heart or an open ear and that what I shared didn't feel like I was, I don't know, that I was like, I don't just don't want to hurt anyone's feelings or make people feel like what they believe is wrong. That's not all what I'm trying to do. And yeah, I just, I just hope that that it came across that way but anyways you can tell that I'm starting to feel nervous um I love you all so much your support means the world if you want to leave a review or a rate that would be so amazing I was actually just reading through my apple reviews recently I always forget how to log on to read them because there's like the ones they show to the public but then there's ones that I don't know like for some reason you can only see on my end I don't know how apple podcast reviews work but anyways I was reading them recently and you guys have left me so many sweet ones and they just mean the world to me literally I was like crying reading them I was like oh my gosh this is all I've ever dreamed of and I'm so happy that you all connect but thank you so much for being here we'll be back on Wednesday for another five years time podcast and sending you lots of love on this valentine's day and tomorrow's not valentine's day but on this valentine's week Sending sunshine, good vibes, and yummy food. Mwah!